Good evening and welcome to the Owen Center in Peoria, Illinois for game two of the series between the Bradley Braves and the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. Bradley took a crushing defeat last night, five to one. Now today's a new day, it's a new game. Why don't we toss it over to our keys to the game? I'm Megan Ruger-Smith alongside Caden Sexton. Hey, Caden, what do you got? Hey Megan, so today's keys of the game for Iowa include momentum. If Iowa scores early, they could put this one away. If Iowa keeps peppering Cole throughout the game, the momentum tonight might keep racking up that scoreboard. The second one is defense. Last night's aggressive defensive play held the Braves to under 20 shots on goal. With such a low shot on goal total, the Braves could only, only net one last night. This feisty defense, however, put them in the box six times. Penalty kill may be great, but the last thing you want is to limit your team by a player for 12 minutes. Iowa was able to keep the Bradley shots uh, low by blocking all the lanes and uh, closing down shot opportunities. To stop goals and shots, this defense needs to repeat last night's performance. And finally, penalty kill. The Hawkeyes snuffed the light on Bradley's power play. Having an extra attacker didn't help the Braves last night. If the Hawkeyes do this again, we might see another one goal game here for Bradley. And for Bradley's keys to the game, we have revenge. Garrett made this one of Iowa's points last night on the broadcast, but now the tides are turned. Bradley didn't play their best last night. Senior Trevor Cooney left and is out tonight with an injured wrist. These boys are hungry for goals, but more importantly, want to fight for that win. Uh, full, si full 60, under 20 shots, five penalties to kill for a total of 17 minutes, which included a five minute major and a five on three attempt defensive miscues, and more. Bradley spent too much of yesterday's game working from behind, prohibiting them from catching up. And lastly, shots, shots, and maybe a few more shots, Megan. Bradley w shot under 20 times last night in 60 minutes. That was not very good for the team, and Bradley needs to just fire more shots on net, and hopefully a couple more can squeak past and get in. All right, thank you so much, Caden. Before we get into the starters for the Hawkeyes and the Braves, we're going to head down to our ringside reporter, Logan Quinn, for a quick analysis of last night. Logan. Last night, the Iowa Hawkeyes heavily outshot the Bradley Braves and were able to cruise to a 5-1 to victory. Tonight, Bradley looks to regain some of the energy they were able to create in the late third period, and hopefully even the weekend series, 1-1, one to -one, and hopefully set off another win streak because last night Iowa did snap Bradley's six game win streak. Back to you, Megan. All right, thank you so much, Logan. So the starters for the teams will take a look at University of Iowa. In goal, the Hawkeyes are once again trusting Justin Howard with the start. Last night we saw an incredible game from Howard and there were not a lot of shots on net as we will most likely talk about a lot this game. But Howard did a great job stopping any attempt, really, at Bradley attempting to gain momentum. And we also have, at defense, Andrew Pape and Ryan Carlson. Carlson had an assist last night and was a part of the electric Hawkeyes offense. And forwards for the Hawkeyes, we have Brian Raffone, Zachary Lapori, and Luca Golding. Now, one major problem, as we talked about a little bit, was there was a lot of time spent in the penalty box for the Hawkeyes. Can you talk a little bit about the penalties you saw last night? Yeah, you know, they were playing very physical on both sides of the puck. Uh, there was a couple shifts where they just wanted to go out and check each other, and they weren't even fighting for the puck. As Logan mentioned last night, they are kind of just trying to swap the puck and then hit the next guy they could see. Both teams really just need to lower the penalties if they want to have success in this one. And Bradley, a little bit desperate today for a win. There's a little bit of history between these two teams. The Braves defeating University of Iowa in the Maka semifinals last year and then having a crushing defeat to Iowa last night. And as we look at the starters here, Cole Walter in the net. Walter has been a solid foundation for Bradley and really impressively only allowing, and now this kind of sounds a little weird, but only allowing five goals, but the amount of shots that the Hawkeyes were taking on him has to put pressure on you as a goalie. And the fact that Walter has been able to stand guard and bolster his defense and not just let them slip in has been quite impressive. And for our starters, we see Sam Bryant 
Sam Bryant is a older member of the team, has taken on a leadership position here. Bryant definitely strong on defense, and it's fun to see him out there. We also have Jacob Gousset. Gousset has spent a lot of time on the Division Three team, so it'll be exciting to see how he can acclimate to the chemistry of this higher level team. And forwards, we have Jack Flood, Andrew Spence, and Ethan Baker. So it looks like the Braves are going to come out of the box swinging here, really looking forward to kind of starting the game hot and not letting the Hawkeyes get that momentum that we were discussing earlier. Yeah, Megan, goals is the key to this game. Getting out shot 50 to 20 is not something you want to have happen, but you mentioned Cole was a solid foundation. When you face 50 shots, you can only expect your goalie to save so many. Sadly, he he let five in, but it could have been way higher. If Cole can lock down the crease like he did last night and this offset offense can keep its production up, we could see a, a turn of the tide for Bradley. Now, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned Sam Bryant starting at defense tonight, Megan. He is the second most on the team in penalty minutes with 14. Yes. So keeping him on that ice, not only is going to help penalty kill with his defensive performance, help with his leadership, but in general, we need him out there so that this game can run smoothly. Spending 14 minutes in the box is not something we can afford. Yes, and having Bryant, one of these older veteran players, spending time in the box is definitely not something that you want to see. No, it's not. Now, it's a Saturday night here. It is Dad's Weekend. We're going to take a look over at the student section for the Bradley fans. We see a lot of parents there. And right by the ice, we have one of Bradley's fraternities, Delta Upsilon, also dubbed by some Bradley students the Hockey Frat. It's always nice to see their attendance here at Bradley Games. They definitely make their presence known. And it's just always great to see the support that they have for each other, wearing each other's jerseys and just being loud and showing their support for the team. And it's also fun to see the turnout of parents that come to support their kids. And to all of you listening on this broadcast, wherever you are supporting either Bradley or the Hawkeyes, we are happy to have you here. And thank you for tuning in to the Bradley Hockey Network. Just a few minutes away from game time here, about six minutes out, we are gonna cut for a quick game, a quick, quick break and we'll come back right before puck drop.
Welcome back to the Owen Center here in wonderful Peoria, Illinois. We are just a few minutes from game start here, but we're going to take a look at the coaching staff for the Hawkeyes first. Head coach Kevin Brooks alongside assistant coach Jacob Holtz. And for the Braves, a lot of fresh faces here for those of you just joining us for the first time this season. Head coach Mike Gertler, it's his first year with the Braves. He is the head coach of the Rivermen. He is followed by Nate Chasteen, assistant coach for the Braves, and he was actually a player for the Rivermen in the SPHL. Another assistant coach is Johan Dahlin. Dahlin is the longest tenured coach for the Braves. He's been here for five years, and he really did help build this program. And lastly, goal coach Ryan Cotier. And here we are, puck drop, flood, unable to get it, sent back. Following it is Bryant, Bryant behind the net, into the wall. And it'll be sent over there by the student section, sent down the ice, over to Rafone. Rafone over to Carlson. And Rafone will send it down, dumping it in. Getting aggressive here early on. Pape unable to get that in, and that'll get sent down by Brian as we see a line change here. Pape into the wall, bounces it off, bounces off the side of the net there. That was a little scary there for the Braves. And we see a little bit of a battle there between Flood and Mullen. Coming around the corner, and they are still over there. Gousset has now joined them. And that'll get pulled away nicely. And we are fighting a little bit, and that'll get away from the Hawkeyes. Picked up by Dudzik. That'll get tossed down. Picked up again by Mullen. Cross the net. Hawkeyes already showing aggressive offense here. Mullen will shove that back in. Dudzik over to Rafone, and it's kind of going back and forth here between Dudzik and Rafone, as Flood back out on the ice, gets it away from Dudzik, and that'll get picked up by Norris. Norris, Mullen and Gousset over in the corner. Norris once again having it, skating past Blessing for the Braves, and coming around is Malbon into the corner. And shot at by Norris, bounced off the pads of Walter. Another great shot there by Dudzik. Just getting outside of the net and time will get called. Yeah, that was not a good start to the Braves. The puck stayed on their side of the blue line the entire time. Although not many shots were taken, you don't want to see that much pressure put on your goalie with only two minutes into this game. That first shot, however, I would like to go back to where the puck hit the post and Cole wasn't really there. I mean, it looks like <laughs> he kind of thought it was going out and he was going to try and retrieve it from behind the net, but instead it redirected off the boards and uh, thankfully didn't go in. And Bradley here looking to get some offense going. Down goes Tommy Davis, his second full game back. And over in the corner. For the Hawkeyes, Norris. Blessing sends it down across the ice. Branchewski. And the Hawkeyes will pick it up in the back left corner. Blessing trying to get a grip on it. Viola coming around, turning around, trying to send it over to Branchewski. And the Braves looking to get it in their own offensive zone and it'll get sent down being followed by Logan Cornell. Cornell will send it across the ice for Brickhouse to pick it up. Brickhouse in the corner with Schmidt and Pierce. Pierce sends it over to Edgison. Edgison had a really nice shot there, but it barely got in the glove of Justin Howard. Howard has had a very strong season this year. In his five starts, he has a 4-1 record uh, with a, a 9-17 save percentage. So 
the Bradley Braves need to put some real shots at him to get past them. And carrying it away is Neary, and that'll get picked up by Walter. Quick play there. And little talks over there as the Braves try to reconvene. Yeah, it looked like uh, the goalie Cole had some words with the referee there. However, the puck has been dropped, and it looks like it's back in play for the Hawkeyes. And Schmidt into the wall with Zillig. And coming around. Grady sending it down. Schmidt over there with Flood. And Rafone will get a hold on it. Coming around. Schmidt sending him into the wall as the puck gets away. Baker. Over to Schmidt, and Schmidt will send it down. Spence, excuse me, will send it down before we see a line change here by the Braves. Etchison sends Neary into the wall as Bryant goes to chase after it. Pierce over to Corrales. Unfortunately for the Braves, that is picked up by Luca Golding. Chasing it down is Carlson. And the Braves here looking to take control as Bryant sends it over to Pierce. However, Pierce unable to pick it up. Carlson sends it down to Lepore. Lepore coming behind the net as Walter gets ready for a save. And time is called. Yeah, this has been a very scrappy matchup so far. Iowa has been doing a lot to control this puck, and Bradley's been playing a lot of hard defense. I know they've uh, taken injuries on both sides, offense and defense, but they have a short number of defense tonight, so they're going to need to uh, work hard, but work quick and get some quick line changes. Bradley really needs to start this game off strong, coming off their loss last night. Norris sending it down. Braves trying to get something going here, and Rafone will pick it up, shoot it at the net. Nice save there by Walter. Walter really having to step it up as we see a penalty assessed to Bradley. That penalty went to Zach Malbon, and it looks like we'll have 148 left on it. Malbon has uh, only six prior minutes in the box this period, so he's been, or I'm sorry, in this game or season, so he's been keeping it pretty clean. However, Iowa now has the man advantage. And Iowa will send it in for the first goal of the game on the power play. Iowa striking quick after that time was called. What did you see there, Caden, from the Hawkeyes? Yeah, just they wanted to put shots in on Cole during this uh, uh, power play while they had the chance of the man advantage. Immediately off the faceoff, they set up three passes and a shot on goal. Last night, they failed on six power plays. 39% in the season of their goals came on the power play. Prior to last night's game, they were not happy that Bradley shut him out, so they came in early. Hawkeyes winning that faceoff there, and the Hawkeyes continuing to shoot at Walter, who picks it up, and we talked about a little last night after the game and before this game as broadcasters, we kind of said there's only so much you as a goalie can do when there are just so many shots being thrown at you. So right now the challenge is Bradley's defense figuring out a way. Once again, another shot on goal there for the Hawkeyes, just finding a way to get it in their own offensive zone. Bradley needs to get out of the defensive mindset and start being a little more aggressive here. Shot by Mullen. Again, another stoppage here. That goal came from Carlson, assisted by Rafone. We saw an assist from both Carlson and Rafone last night as Shaq will send it over to Davis. Davis skating around, tries to get it to Blessing. It just goes wide, Blessing sending it back. And Schmidt will set it into the glove of Howard as we see a little bit of aggression on the ice here between Shaq and some of the Iowa players. Things were getting a little heated in the third period last night, so it's not too surprising we're starting to see some push and pull here from both teams. 
No, yeah, they they remember last light last night a lot. There was a couple injuries just based off of how powerful those hits came in last night, and they want to be rough and tumble again, as it looks like here. Pierce will get that face off, sends it back to Cam Edgison. Rafone over in the corner with him is able to dig it out. Over to Dodzik. Dodzik will send it down, chasing after it is Zillig. Schmidt will toss it away over to Rock. Rock to Pierce. Pierce unable to get it past Parsi. And into the wall goes Pierce. Pierce over to Daniels. Daniels tries to glove it. Will stick it away. Coming in is Rafone. Rafone. And Walter is able to knock it away. Schmidt coming down. As that will get picked up by Viola. Rafone. Unable to get a hold of it. And that is sent down by the Braves. However, picked back up by the Hawkeyes. Right now, Bradley still swirling in their own zone. And that is Schmidt with a handle on it. Schmidt will send it down, and that gets trapped by Norris. Norris to Branchewski. Branchewski coming around. Wide angle trying to send it in in the back, but it'll get sent down. And Viola will pick it up, send it in. Walter behind the net stopping it, and that'll get picked up by Rock. Flood in the corner trying to get it. Viola will send it back down, shooting once again at the net. Hawkeyes proving to be relentless here. In the corner is Parisi. And the Braves huddle in the corner as we see Spence sending it down, unable to get anything done. Howard will knock it away. And that is shot over to Viola. Viola to Branchewski, unable to pick it up. Malbon comes in, sends it across the net to Brian Bryant, back to Malbon. Malbon coming in hot, looking to get something going here. And that is pushed away by Brickhouse. Nice defense there for the Hawkeyes, and Shaq coming in. Shaq will regain control of the puck. Sending over Zillig. Nice job there by Neary to get Bradley away from the puck, and Brickhouse coming around will send it down. Bryant back and forth as the Hawkeyes. Big push there by Malbon, and that'll get sent down. Blessing to Davis. Davis right now Definitely looking to score. Nice shot by Davis, but gloved by Howard. Yeah, Zach Malbon is out there, and he is out there trying to make something happen, whether that be on the breakaway, taking any shot that he could get, going in the box for the first score of the game because of his physical play, and just there, his rough and tumble hits, just trying to create and maybe energize these guys to get them moving. Gousset on the ice now, and that gets picked up by Golding. Golding rushing towards the goal, and he will come around, send it back to the Hawkeyes. Lapori trying to send it in aggressively, but that won't get in as the ref here talks to Carlson. And we will see a little bit of conversation here between the refs and some of the Braves. Bryant on the ice, Gousset. Spending a little more time with the ref as we see Spence head over to the bench. Yeah, Gousset, after that play happened, put his hands in the face of one of the Iowa Hawkeyes and knocked him to the ground. A bunch of players rushed over, but the referee stopped it immediately. And the Hawkeyes, really dominant today on the faceoffs, not letting Bradley get any momentum from the start. Carlson to take the face off. Flood following it up. And once again, we see a little bit of commotion in front of the net there. Backhanded by Golding. And Schmidt unable to get it in their zone. Spence coming around. Bradley catching up. Into the wall goes Carlson. And Flood will get a hand on it. Send it over to Spence. Unable to get it in the stick. Picked up by Rafone. Rafone coming around. No help there from his teammates going in solo. Chasing it down is Baker, followed by Pape. Golding 
sends it, picks it up is Malbon. Malbon looking to send it over. Nice job there capturing it is Golding. You see a little bit of a fight there in the corner. And Grady will send it in, unable to get it. Davis coming in two on two, and he will send it over to Right, and that is a goal. Grady Blessing scores the first goal here for the Braves. Davis to Blessing, what a combination. Davis, a junior, one of the best players on the team. His return yesterday was much looked forward to, and Grady Blessing, our standout freshman. What a goal. That was a beautiful shot, beautiful pass, and it made an opportunity to make this game 1-1. Uh, on the rebound, Grady was able to come in, see the puck right in front of the net, and just put that one in. And that gets sent over. Rock following it, sends it behind Mullen. Blessing still on the ice, and he will send it up and away. Yeah, the uh, student section is happy about that one, doing their uh, chant over there. However, this uh, this puck is going to have to go back and for in the center for the faceoff. And Hawkeyes looking to fight back here, but the Braves trying to put together momentum as Malbon will send it over to Shaq Blessing. Still heated, follows it up, sends it over to Rock. Rock up there with Zillig. And another nice shot there by Shaq, trying to just tip it in. Unfortunately, it gets away. Blessing still over in the corner. Shaq now joins him as they are fighting off Norris. And into the wall goes Blessing as the Hawkeyes try to regain it. Great job there by Davis, just poking it away from the Hawkeyes defenders. And Grady sends it down into Bradley's defensive zone. Rock still out there. Chasing it down. Dudzik. Nice shot there by Davis. Followed up is Daniels. In the corner, Malbon coming around. Malbon sending it to Daniels. Intercepted by Bruchensky, gloved by Walter. And we see a little bit of action there as the refs call time and separate the two teams. Yeah, the Braves head coach is furious right now. He was shouting on top of his lungs for an offsides call there, and now he's calling every ref over to hear his case. He's standing over there like a lawyer trying to tell them that they aren't watching Iowa close enough. And we see a penalty will be assessed to the Hawkeyes. And it looks like it's going to CJ Parisi, if I can read that number right. Yep, that is number 73, Parisi. Bradley on the power play, now's their chance to get something going. And Pierce pokes that away, Davis. Getting it away, slammed into the boards by Brickhouse. We are getting physical. Big hit there by Zillig, and you can hear the fans are getting excited. And the net is empty for the Braves. No one's in the net. Time is called. Chaos has taken over the ice. Yeah, K Cole got out of the net once the penalty got called to try and create an extra attacker. and. Uh, number 21 over there for Iowa. He just tried to go and put the puck in even though the penalty was already called. He can't touch it. And so our captain over there had a little rough and tumble with him and it looks like we were close to getting a fight. It looks like the referees are trying to just get both teams their benches to get everybody calm. And it looks like we're gonna have three right. men now in the box. Okay, so we take a timeout here and the Hawkeyes currently have three in the box and we will get you those as soon as they come. We have uh, we have uh, Golden is one of the players out in that box, but we can't see the other numbers quite yet. All right, so we already have CJ 
Parisi. Luca Golding. Luca Golding also in the box. Golding spent a lot of time in the box last night, and we also, I believe, see Brian Raffone, if I'm not mistaken. Raffone and Golding, once again, both of them spent a considerable amount of time in the box, and now we have a five on two if Bradley does not have a penalty, but we do see. It looks like the reps yeah. are trying to talk it out with our uh, coordinator, Sarah. But, you know, it's interesting to see the players that are in the box right now, Megan. Yep. Because Parisi, Parisi, Rafone, and Golding are numbers three, uh, four through six on point leaders for the mm -hmm. Iowa Hawkeyes. So not only are they going to have the man disadvantage, not only are they going to have to penalty kill for two minutes, yes. uh, but they also are losing three of their top players. This is Bradley's opportunity. Their top scorers... Uh, in the box right now, this is Bradley's opportunity. And it looks like it's going to be a four. It's a five on three, it looks like. But the referees are having more debate and talking. And one of the coaches is trying to get players out of the box still. Bradley will take the five on three here. Davis definitely sending out an offensive line here with Davis and Shaq. Spence will send it over to Davis. Davis sending it back. Iowa on the penalty kill. Davis looks like he was rearing up for a big hit. Shaq as well. Shaq keeping his options open. Chips it over to Davis. Davis coming around the back. Another fake out by Davis. Davis over to Bryant. Spence tries to send it in. Nice block there by the goalie Howard alongside Andrew Pape. And that'll get sent down. Davis once again picking it up. The pace really has slowed down here with the penalties assessed. And Davis sends it down, trying to get them with the fake out again. Davis over to Shaq. The Braves taking their time on things. A little hard there by Shaq. Gets by Spence. And that'll get dumped by Carlson as the Hawkeyes go for a line change. Spence to Davis. Davis trying to come back fast. Pierce blocking any shot. Davis to Shaq, as we have seen. Shaq over to Spence. Spence to Davis. Davis to Shaq. And that'll get just outside of the net as there is scrambling and sent to the floor is Norris. Davis. Davis a big swing. Nice job here by the Hawkeyes on the penalty kill as there's less than 30 seconds for both penalties being taken. Spence over to Davis. And Davis with a creative shot there, but unable to get it in. That'll get dumped down to end one penalty. And still three on five here. And Carlson sending it in, picked up there by Flood. Flood over to Ethan Baker. Baker to Edgeson. Edgeson unable to pick it up. Edgeson sending it back. Intercepted by Baker. Baker. Over to Rack. Flood coming in behind Rafone. Rafone has rejoined them on the ice. Five on four now. The penalty's up on the clock on the scoreboard, but the two players are in. So I'm confused here personally. Did they assess majors or did the miscommunication happen? And it looks like the players are now leaving the box. So it looks like they just were confused with what's going on and ran a five on four set for an um, extra minute without needing to. I, I think Iowa was just not able, not communicating right with either the referees or the coach with the players, but now one of the players is retaking a seat in the box in a little bit of anger. Okay, so either we are getting And they are currently calling it there. The ice mic picked up some of it. I am working on getting us clarification. In the box down there, it can get a little chaotic. I was on PA last night. And that looks to be 88 in the box. That is Drew Zillig. As we see Brickhouse talking to the refs. The Hawkeyes with four men on the ice. as we are trying to figure out the situation here. 
Yeah, it looks like, oh, and it looks like the uh, game coordinator just put a minute and nine seconds back on the clock. So it looks like uh, number 88 for the Hawkeyes is going to stay in the box for another minute, which means we will have a five on four chance here All to right. get something in. The power play continues for the Braves. Braves trying to get something done here as we see Davis takes a break. Different line out here. Rock taking a step back. And Rock will send it in, gets past Rafone. And that is sent back to Rack. Rack over to Etchison and Brun Nope, that is getting shoved down Etchison. Blessing was pushed down by Rafone. A little bit of tension here between these two teams. Brickhouse picking it up, sending it down. That'll get picked up by Sam Bryant. Sam Bryant taking a moment, assessing his options as Bradley gets a line change. They'll bring it back into their own zone. All right, and we will see Viola coming in, and that is a nice job by Schmidt poking it away. Puck gets away, Norris coming around back into the Hawkeyes' own zone. Mullen sent it down, gloved by Schmidt. Renchewski now getting around Daniels, chipping it up, not close to the net. And Viola on the ground as that is gloved by Walter. Yeah, the Hawkeyes had full strength there for the last uh, 10 seconds. And, you know, it's a 1-1 game right now, Megan. Score's tied. We got 4.37 left in the first period. However, if Bradley comes away with the loss tonight, blowing that five-on-three opportunity and the extra two minutes of penalty following it might be the factor that will make them have a terrible rest of their week until U of I. <laughs> Absolutely. And you really want to pull away here. Coach Gertler said six is luck, seven winning streak is actual skill, and we weren't able to get to seven, but at least splitting the series would be good for the Braves. And that is Baker. Baker sending it down to Spence. Coming around is Flood. Spence will just send it in, unable to get it in. Malbon trying to pick it up from the net time is called. Yeah, they're, uh, they're continuing to play scrappy. You know, I mean, obviously three guys got put in that box, and it looks like we're going to have another mo another one come in now. Penalty uh, being assessed to C.J. Parisi. This is his second penalty, uh, and I'd like to remind everyone we are in the first period with four minutes and 15 seconds remaining. So we already have two penalties here for Parisi in one period. Shaq. Over to Spence, Spence to Bryant, Bryant to Davis. Davis looking to get a goal in. Davis getting a little itchy here. Davis definitely the highest scorer of the returning players from last season. Bryant will shoot it in and it'll just get over the head of Howard and time is called. Yeah, it looks like they're uh, they're trying to just create a window, but with a minute 36 left and having already gone through, or this being the fourth penalty of the period, you have to walk away with a goal here. All right, and Pape will send it down. Bradley looking to try and get something out of the power plays that they've had for a lot of this period. Nice shot there by Bryant, Glove by Howard. And there is a lot of aggression there. Howard's mask gets knocked off and he will angrily throw the puck down the ice. It, yeah, in my uh, 18 years of life, I've never seen the <laughs> goalie just grab the puck and throw it down the rink. Uh, you see something new every day here at the Owen Center. I guess we do. All right, we will uh, take a look here as things settle down. The ref is coming back around and we see Spence head to the penalty box. 
Yeah, Spence was the one that came in and had a very late hit there uh, after the whistle was blown and the puck was grabbed by Howard. I think Howard uh, probably threw the puck uh, because of the helmet knockoff and just the hit following it. We're now going to see a four on four for a minute 20 and then uh, 40 seconds of penalty kill that Bradley's going to have to deal with from Iowa. Spence in for roughing. Most of the penalties yesterday came from roughing and cross check, so it's not too surprising that we see some more here tonight. Lapori sends it backwards over to Norris. Norris over to Mullen. Davis stopping it and blessing. Blessing over to Bryant. Trying to get it out of their zone as they are at even strength right now. Blessing will follow it down. Howard exits the goal. Mullen coming around fast. Schmidt will pick it up. Schmidt over to Blessing. Nice job there. Blessing will dump it. Howard once again coming to stop the momentum for the Hawkeyes. And over in the corner, Carlson. Carlson fighting it out. Right in front of the student section there where they are blocking our view so inconveniently. And we see Blessing still trying to fight it out there. And Lapori gets it away. Great job there by Blessing to knock that puck off course. And Malbon coming around. Nice job. No one there to pick it up. And he will go into the wall with Rafone. Pierce on the ice as well alongside Baker. Baker unable to get anything done. Rafone, and we now see full strength for the Hawkeyes. 30 seconds left on the power play. And Grady coming out on the ice. And Hawkeyes looking to get something done here. But nice job by the Braves defense sending it down. Causing Rafone to go chase after it. Killing 10 seconds off the penalty kill. Flood will... Send it out of play. Yeah, you mentioned Grady Blessing on that four and four, Megan. He was fighting very hard in the corner to keep the puck in possession of Bradley. And even as the puck skated into Iowa's zone and Iowa had control, he continued to fight and follow. He is a rookie, in, or a freshman, excuse me, and he is fighting and working hard for this team. But he's surprisingly done so with zero penalty minutes. He's playing scrappy hockey, but clean hockey. It's always fun to see, and that goes out of bounds again. Owen Center having some nice beams in the roofing that the puck likes to live in. And it looks like Bradley now is at full strength. And we will see Viola and Etchison with the faceoff. Viola sending it backwards. Davis picking it up. And that'll get out of play once more. Yeah, we got a minute 27 here, and for now at least, we'll have a five-on-five five for both sides. Feels like years since we've seen full strength on both sides of the puck as this faceoff is being brought back to center ice. So. And the Hawkeyes win the faceoff once more. And we see Grady sending it down. Viola, and that'll get poked away by Schmidt. Nice defense there by the Braves. Braves now looking to just get out of this period tied. That's another shot there by Grady. And coming around, picking it up. Grady having a lot of action here in the past 30 seconds. That'll get shot. Bryant sending it down. Viola into the boards. And that'll get poked back out of play into the nets. We've had a lot of stoppages here so far. Yeah, both teams are just trying to get something going. And if they don't get it to work, they're just delaying the game and getting the faceoff back. I mean, Iowa has used this tactic. It, it almost has a tactic. Iowa is winning nearly every faceoff. So why not just regroup, get a fresh set of guys out there and uh, fight another day? You'd be hard pressed to say that Iowa has not had complete dominance this entire game. Despite being tied, Bradley has been struggling to get any offensive connection going. And really, as we mentioned, one of the keys to the game, 
Iowa has carried that momentum from yesterday, and the Hawkeyes are doing a great job. And Walter will glove it the last minute here, going by excruciatingly slowly as we have stoppages every couple of seconds. Yeah, it feels like uh, they're just wanting to make this last minute feel like five, and I think they're ready for the locker rooms, but doesn't and seem so. Fascinating line here, putting Davis, Shaq, Daniels, Gousset, and Malbon out. This is definitely a powerful line. To me, it kind of seems like Bradley is trying to get some final push of momentum here. Malbon will send it down, chasing after it. Dudzik and Dudzik down in the corner. Mullen chipped over by Daniels, and Malbon will come around, send it down to Daniels. Time is called, and there are seven seconds remaining in the period. Yeah, Megan, I think they put that line out there because they wanted their veterans to go out and just try and put the puck on the other splue line. The last uh, minute and 30 has been in Bradley's zone, and Cole Walters is a great goalie, but like we've been saying all game, he can't face every shot and be expected to save it. So I think the coach did that just to try and get the puck away from him as quickly as possible. And we will play out the rest of the period here. Bradley unable to get ahead. Caden, what did you see that period from the Hawkeyes that you liked? Yeah, from the Hawkeyes, I really liked seeing their aggression and their ability to keep the puck on their side, uh, on our side of the blue line. I mean, the reason that Cole looked a little, I mean, he saved every shot minus one, but he had a lot more, just like last night, he had a lot more shots that he had to stop than Howard did from the Iowa side. And it's because Iowa did two things right. They played aggressively and kept the puck on the blue line, but also they continuously centered that puck in front of the goal to create better shot opportunities. Something that uh, I couldn't mention the entire time watching because of how much uh, aggressive and fighting there was, but four penalties. That was what killed Iowa's momentum this period and only gave them one goal because the stoppage of time was just a killer for them. All right, thank you for that, Caden. And now we are going to head over to our analyst, Logan Quinn. The game started off a lot like last night. Iowa was controlling the puck, creating chances, and they were able to capitalize early. It wasn't until around the 10 minute mark that Bradley was able to get on the board thanks to Tommy Davis, who on a two on one was able to bury a rebound off Howard. After that goal for Bradley, they were really able to create some energy and start buzzing. They generated a lot of shots and a lot of offensive zone time thanks to the momentum that that goal built. Back to you, Megan. Thank you, Logan, for that analysis. Definitely been an exciting game so far, a lot of physicality between the two teams. What are you expecting the Braves to adjust for this next period, Caden? You know, the Braves lost on four penalty kills, or four power plays. They got killed four times, and that is going to be something that haunts them to the locker room. You know their head coach is in there telling them that, hey, it's okay, we're still tied 1-1, but if they have another penal, uh, power play, they have to execute it. The offense has been taking shots, and they uh, and it looks like they're going to play more aggressive on offense than they did last night, Megan. But at the same time, they need their defense to get it to the other side of the puck if they want to tr take more shots. So. All right. We will catch you back here at the top of the second period. You are watching the Bradley Hockey Network. I'm Megan Ruger-Smith alongside Caden Sexton and our ringside reporter, Logan Quinn. We'll see you back here on the Bradley Hockey Network.
Welcome back to the Bradley Hockey Network. As we head to the top of the second period here, tied one to one, it's been an intense set of games so far here at the Owen Center in Peoria. And we see the teams come out to take the ice. Hopefully, we'll have another exciting period here. And the Braves are definitely going to look to make some more connected passes and try and do their best to get some offense going. And the Hawkeyes honestly just need to continue what they have been doing so far the past four periods and just continue the momentum that they have. Yeah, Megan, 22 to 12 shots on goal means Bradley is uh, 10 shots behind, yet they've had three more power plays to create shots, including that five on three opportunity that we saw. Bradley chess uh, that we saw for oh, two minutes. Bradley needs to focus their shots and get out of the defensive zone so then they could make more happen on the, uh, with the time they have left. They only have two periods left in this intense uh, two days worth of hockey. Now they need to put them to good use because they want to split the series going into U of I. Walter returns to the net. We have a little bit of a special occurrence here as both Braden Wickline and Devin Schneider have dressed. So it'll be definitely interesting to see if we get one of those reserve goalies out on the ice tonight. Howard returns. Starting line here for the Braves in the second period, Sam Bryant, Andrew Spence, Jacob Gousset, Flood, and Baker. Braves attempting to win that faceoff to get started off in their own defensive zone. Hawkeyes will send it over to each other behind the net. Into the corner as Spence is chasing down Norris. And Flood will dig it out, and that will get sent around. And big hit there by Flood to Luca Golding. Bryant into Carlson. In the corner, and that gets bounced away from Howard. Golding picking it up, sending over to Carlson. Nice interference there by Spence. Flood picking it up, sends it behind the net, picked up by Norris. Posey with control and he will send it down. Norris once again having control of the puck. Norris over to Mullen. Mullen to Golding and that'll get sent down into the Braves defensive zone. And big hit there delivered by Malbon. Golding not too happy about that. Bryant Oh, big hit delivered there by Branchuski. A lot of physicality here in the second period. Blessing coming away and will shoot into the glove of Howard. Yeah, Megan, uh, hit after hit after hit. Both sides out there are just going for blood. It's making me debate if they're here to hit each other or play some hockey. I mean, hockey's, or hitting's a part of the game, but it looks like at this point, they've created a rivalry amongst themselves upon the ice, and they're taking it out body to body. Brenchuski pushed away by Bryant. Nice job there. Pierce will send it down. Howard behind the net. Rafone over to pick it up. Etchison in the way. And in the corner is Viola, tripped by Schmidt. And... New face here on the ice, Corrales. Attempting to break up the rhythm here for the Braves. Rafone in the corner with Viola. It'll get sent down behind Walter. Bryant over to Spence. Spence over to Corrales. Corrales leading the way for the Braves and he will dump it down as we see a big push there by Corrales and he loses his stick. Bryant into the wall alongside Pape and time is called. Yeah, neither of these teams have uh, added a shot in the first two and a half minutes of play here. They are uh, needing to collect the puck and put aggression towards the goal instead of each other, if either of them want to succeed and change the tie on the scoreboard. 
Davis taking the face off and Davis falling onto the ice. Malbon in the corner. Breakaway here by Brunchuski. Goose and he'll chip it up off the shoulder pad of Walter. Malbon coming around over to Davis. Davis loses control of the puck over to Blessing. We'll see if this Blessing Davis duo can pull something out again. Brady. Nice save there by Cole Walter, knocking it away. And that'll get into the net past Cole Walter. University of Iowa fans on their feet. Yeah, that was a beautiful goal, but it was created by the miscues on defense of Bradley. Two, if not th two breakaways, clean breakaways, plus a third breakaway that allowed that rebound to get over to the side of the ice with Cole's body going one way. The net was open for the rebounded shot to go in. Schmidt now giving some words to Cole as the players are getting ready to uh, take this rebound with now a 2-1 game for the Hawkeyes. Once again, already back in Bradley's defensive zone. Rock coming around, knocking it away from Grady. Spence and Flood in the corner there by Dudzik. Dudzik over to Brickhouse. Brickhouse sends it down, and that gets picked up by Schmidt. And Schmidt will get it past Flood. Behind the net comes Brickhouse. Brickhouse to Dudzik, and that comes back into Bradley's zone. Rock picks it up, passes it to Schmidt, gets deflected off of Baker. Scoring for the Hawkeyes. Number 10, Michael Viola. Oh, big hit administered there by Schmidt to Grady. Flood with control over to Baker. Baker over to Spence. Spence chips it high in the air as we will see a line change here. Big hit administered there. Spence and Cornell in the corner. Cornell coming around. Pierce hit. Schmidt hit Grady who just is coming off a point. Grady been a big part of the offense here. And that'll get away. Corrales tipping it away. And Sam Bryant chasing it down. Coming around, backhanding it. Another attempt by Corrales here to get control. Sent to Schmidt. Corrales trying to poke it away from Neary. Neary sending it down. Bryant chasing it. Carlson coming around. Orzeski has joined us on the ice. Sam Bryant coming around and he will chip it down. That gets picked up by Norris. Norris dumps it. Bryant waits down there in the zone. That gets chipped up, not out of play. Picked up there by Neary. Neary over to Mullen. Mullen tips it back to Neary. Neary back to Mullen. Short passes, trying to connect something here. Over to Norris once more. The two of them being a huge part of the defense here. Bryant coming in. A lot of noise from the Hawkeyes bench as it gets sent down, not in icing. Blessing out on the ice alongside Tommy Shack, Malbon Gousset. In the corner, there is a battle for the puck. Coming out of it is Shack and Davis in the defensive zone. Nice job by Gousset blocking the shot there from Iowa. Norris will glove it, send it down back on the ice, get it through the legs of Blessing. Blessing trying to get it back to Davis. Malbon allows it to get to Golding. And we see Rafone coming back into their own defensive end. Jack will pick it up. Toss it over to Gousset. And Gousset will send it down. Howard behind the net, keeping careful control of it. Rafone coming around, sends it across the ice over to Norris. Norris to Golding. And we see Carlson coming in. Big hit there by Malbon to Carlson. And we see Baker coming in fast, and he will stop. Falling to the ice is Spence. Over in the corner, another fight here at the boards for Flood. Baker trying to get it in. Nice deflection there by Howard. 
And that gets sent down, spending more time in Bradley's defensive zone. Malbon, Rock has joined them on the ice. Spence now, Pierce. Pierce waiting, trying to get some aggression going here for the Braves. Rock sends it down into the corner. Raffone will dish it out behind the net. And he will shoot it down. Schmidt stopping the puck, getting it over to Rock. Nice job by Rock there, out skating Brinchewski. Walter deflecting it. Nice pass there as Daniels attempts to chip it over to Pierce and it gets by. Brickhouse will scoop it up, sends it down to the stick of Schmidt. Bounces, puck bounces off Brickhouse's skates. Pierce sends it into the goal. They are trying to get it in. And we see once again control here by the Hawkeyes. Harisi sending it down. Branchuski in the wall with Blessing. Viola to Pierce, and Pierce will dump it down. Trying to catch their breath are the Braves, and that gets called for icing. Where to start there? We had a long continuation of play there with a lot that went on. You know, we saw, guy, we saw guys like uh, Grady on the Hawkeyes, who was continually fighting for that puck, creating opportunities, but also delivering key checks and making it a competition. There at the end, we saw Pierce kind of dra jabbing a stick at Howard after the rest of the team was on this uh, was on the side of the uh, Bradley net, and the referee had to just come over there to tell him to get, go play hockey. All right, you can hear some loud noise from DU as they are getting excited. Atchison into the wall alongside Golding and Bryant takes control of the puck. Bryant to Pierce and Pierce will pass it to Atchison and Atchison not ready to pick it up. Brickhouse now, Atchison will pass it back. Oh, big hit there by Pierce on Grady. And Blessing appears to trip over Sam Bryant, and the ref goes down. <laughs> there seems to be a lot of uncoordinated chaos here on the ice in the moment. And there's a fight over there in the board. It's Shaq coming out as Davis will come around the net, tries to get it back in. Davis with the backhanded goal. Yeah, that's Tommy Davis's second of the night. He uh, saw that the, uh, the goalie wasn't giving him the, uh, the lane, so he wrapped around the ice and lifted one right over his stick. Welcome back, Tommy Davis. Yeah, this is his second full game on the ice, and that is his fourth goal on the year. When Tommy Davis is on this ice, he's making an instrumentable, er, in, in incredible, insane impact. He is going out there, and he is making opportunities for the rest of the team. And if there's not an opportunity for somebody else, he's taking it in himself. There has been a lot of noise around Davis's return. And he is proving why he is such a prominent player. And we see Tommy Davis head to the penalty box. Two for one there, goal and a penalty box. I guess uh, they cancel each other out, right? Yeah, they <laughs> typically do, but there is a hard argument right now from the uh, Bradley head coach to keep him out, and he looks like he's just frustrated and confused at this point. And Shaq will come off the ice, and we see Flood is going to take this face off as the Hawkeyes start off hot here. Game now tied with 11 minutes remaining. Lapori. Coming around, big hit there by Spence. Golding in the corner alongside Goose, and the puck gets away. Raffone over to Golding, into the net. And that was scored by Ryan Carlson. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the Hawkeyes are celebrating there. Yeah, it was a beautiful goal by Carlson. I mean, look. Last night, they still remember how they went 0 for, 5, uh, 0 for 6 on, uh, on their power plays. They had 39% of their goals prior to last night scored in the power play. They got five last night outside of the power play. 
They've got two tonight in the power play. They remembered and rekeened themselves on how to uh, how to play in power play. But look, we just had the lead, or a tie game for 22 seconds, Megan. And now Bradley has to go back and trail again. And this, and our co head coach now is arguing with the linesman again. And it looks like Bradley is putting in all of their effort to just tie the game, and the Hawkeyes are making every goal actually look easy. Golding coming around. Nice job there by Rock to push it away. Another attempt there by Lapori to get it in. Rafone. Norris calls for it. And time is called as we see a little bit of aggression there from Golding, Cam Etchison, and Rack. Scoring for the Braves, number 27, Tommy Davis. Yeah, we're going to have a line change five, here. It looks like that uh, Shaq got the assist on that goal Davis from Tommy from Davis. Shaq. That'll be Shaq's fourth assist on the year. Uh, with nine goals in front of his four assists, Tommy Shaq is a threat. And the Hawkeyes coming out strong here. Carlson shooting at the net. Nice block there by Walter. Baker looking to get it away. Baker definitely the tallest player by far on the team. Coming in with some power on the ice. And there's a little bit of a fight here for control as we have a three on two battle over there. Hawkeyes end up pulling it out. Rafone, another shot at the net. Braves currently trailing 22 to 12 shots on goal. And that was very close towards another goal. And the Hawkeyes believe that it got in the net. And we see a lot of movement here as the Teams gather the ref, talking for a second as we see some line changes. And a penalty is assessed to number 25, Zach Malbon, for the Braves. Yeah, with 9.38 and trailing, you know, we're halfway through this game now. Trailing by one, we're, we can't take any more of these penalties, but now we're going to have to defend uh, a, a man advantage, or a man disadvantage for the next uh, two minutes. Into the corner. Molin coming around. Skating in a circle there. And that is tossed over to his counterpart, Parisi. Dudzik. And that is dumped by Etchison. Etchison trading off for Flood as Hawkeyes circle in their own defensive zone. Renchuski coming around, Schmidt trailing him. Nice turnaround there by Brenchuski. Over to Parisi is Dudzik. Nice block there by Cole Walter. Mullen into the corner. Mullen to Brenchuski. And that will get in the net for goal number four for the Hawkeyes. How Devastating is it for the Braves. Every one step they take, it feels like the Hawkeyes take six. Yeah, that goal came 55 seconds into the power play. They uh, saw a small window on Cole Walters' glove side, snuck it in barely to take a two-goal lead over the Braves. Truly impressive work by the Hawkeyes. They are not getting complacent, even though it appears they have pure dominance over the Braves right now. It'll be interesting to see how long Walter stays in. And Blessing, unable to stay on his feet here, has Pape sends it towards the net a little offsides. Malbon out of the box. However, the time is still being ran on the penalty clock, but the Braves have five men on the ice. Penalty is over because a goal was scored, but the clock is still running. And they have nobody in the box anyway. And there's so. nobody in the box. Pen scoring does kill penalty. And that is another goal for the Hawkeyes. Not even more than 30 seconds. And the Hawkeyes score another goal, expanding their lead 5-2. to two. 
Yeah, that goal was snuck in by Patrick Neary. He uh, shot that one falling down and somehow it got past Cole Walters. And it looks like uh, goalie coach Cody is calling Cole Walters to the bench as our next goalie is putting his mask on and skating in. We see Devin Schneider take the ice and I did see in our comment section we do have a Devin Schneider fan. So we will see a new goalie here. Nice job there by Cole Walter, doing the best he can for his team. A major theme for the Braves this season has been pressure put on Cole Walter. There's only so much you can do if your goalie is put under an immense amount of pressure. And we have timeouts called here as the Braves looking to come back from a three goal deficit. And we see Shaq, Davis, Bryant, Spence, no, Pierce, and Spence. So we have a little bit of an older line here, and it looks like the Braves are trying to end this period intensely, and we will actually see a power play here as a penalty is called for the Hawkeyes. This power play is exactly what the Braves need in the next two minutes. They'll have the man advantage. They just need to sneak one in. Shaq coming around. Nice job there by Carlson tucking it away. Pierce shoot it at the net, unable to get it in a little wide. Bryant over to Pierce. Shaq a little too far out to grab it. Carlson and Shaq fighting at the boards. Davis coming around. Bryant sends it to the net. Davis against the boards. And that'll get sent back down into Bradley's defensive zone. Schneider guarding the goal. And Bryant coming around. Bryant, little confusion there by the Braves on who to pick that up. Shaq lets it go. Pierce will try and pick it up from the air. Time is called. Yeah, Bradley uh, has a minute five left on their power on the power play here. Uh, it's, ironically, this was the exact time in the power play that they uh, made this. Uh, that we saw this game become 4-2. Sadly, it's now 5-2 with three goal deficit. Bradley's gonna have to take the face off from behind the blue line here, which will put them at a slighter disadvantage. And one minute remaining on the penalty here. Braves desperate to get something in. Blessing will have it get sent down. Rock following in it. Schneider out of the net. Rock coming around. And the possession gets taken away. Brenchuski alongside Flood will battle it out in the boards in the corner. Atchison pick it up, shoots it over to Blessing. Nice job there by Rafone to pick it up. Etchison into the boards with Mullen. <laughs> and there's a little bit of a battle here as Flood goes down. Chipped into the air and that'll get out of play. Yeah, Megan, these last 40 seconds of the power play has kind of looks like the Iowa Hawkeyes have been in control. And look, you're trailing 5-2. Obviously the Hawkeyes' goal is just to play defense at this point and try not to let Bradley come back. But if you're the Braves, you just need to get shots on the board, or shots on net. And right now as we sit, the Hawkeyes controlled the last 40 seconds of that power play. Nice job there by Golding with the stick work, getting creative, elbows away Schmidt. Brickhouse there to pick it up. Full strength for the Hawkeyes as we see a quick change here as Dudzik joins them on the ice. Dudzik will send it up out of play. Yeah, I mean, going back to before, the, while the, when this game was 2-1, uh, Ryan Carlson, talk about him. I mean, he had his seventh and eighth goal of the season to make this, when he made this game 2-1. He's been the person that's given them their leads. And just since then, the power plays killed Bradley and uh, allowed this game to get even bigger of a gap. But without Carlson, who knows where we'd be right now. Malbon 
attempting to get it away from the offensive line here by the Hawkeyes. Mullen coming around to Dudzik. Dudzik keeping a careful eye on it and it gets slammed into the walls by Malvon Davis. Strong hits here by Davis. Definitely a more powerful player for the Braves. Malbon coming around. Gets hit in the wall by Moeller. And that is another attempt for a goal. Big fall there. And we see a little bit of fighting here between Tudzik and Shaq. Just one little push thrown. Nice stop there by Devin Schneider. Yeah, I feel, feel like uh, during those power plays and that little break, we s didn't see as much checking. We, we saw aggressive hockey, but we saw it without bodies colliding. In this past shift, we saw a lot of hits, a lot of boards we heard the sounds of with that, the bodies hitting that glass. And it feels like the hockey, the game kind of just started to return to its original state. Viola controlling the puck. Flood knocks it away. Behind the net, Schneider on guard. As Bryant and Brenchuski are fighting together. Viola coming around and looks to Raffone, unable to get it over to him. And Daniels with Brenchuski into the wall. Goose now with control, sends it over to Sam Bryant. Bryant will chuck it down. And that gets hit by the Hawkeyes defense and he will send it down Cornell. Cornell once again coming back around and Brenchuski will pick it up. Over, nice reception there by Pierce. Cornell over to Raffone. Into Bradley's defensive zone, Rock coming around. Picked up by Grady Blessing. Rock. Defending the goal as Bradley tries to stop the bleeding right now. Ooh, tough. Getting away there from Orzeski. And we see Grady Blessing coming away. Pierce will come pick it up. We have three and a half minutes remaining in this period. Bryant hits it at the net, a little high. Schmidt on the outside waiting. Close call there by Corrales. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to get a good angle to shoot. Schmidt coming around. Zillig will follow the puck, but time is called. Yeah, we saw a lot of clearing attempts happen in the beginning of that shift from Bradley. They wanted to just dump the puck and get it away from Schneider. He hasn't had much time to get set into this game, but he has stopped everything that's came at him so far. However, they really didn't have the goal of trying to score the first half there. However, once they were able to finally get the puck controlled in the opposition's end, they then took some shots and tried to make something happen. However, they couldn't do anything. And Malbon coming around, Will trips, sends it down. Orzeski picks it up, sends it across the ice. Picked up there by Mullen. Coming around. And that'll, that'll get stopped there by Albanese. First time on the ice for him tonight. Malbon picks up his stick. Braves struggling to stay together here as the Hawkeyes remain dominant in the end of this period. Nice block there by Devin Schneider. Another shot at the net for the Braves. Hawkeyes really putting pressure on the Braves here. Nice shot there by Lupori. Big swing there by Mullen. Neary sends it over to Lepore, the two of them heading back and forth just a little bit. Another shot as it deflects off of Schneider. Over to Carlson. And Shaq attempting to get it away from the Hawkeyes. Albanese will send it down. 
Howard picking it up. A little under two minutes here. Lapori with Bryant. Bryant attempting to get it over to Spence. Quickly followed up by Luca Golding. Gousset over to Baker. Baker intercepted by Grady. Baker currently towering over Grady. Bryant following it around Golding. And that'll get chipped up high. And big hit there. Shot there by Dudzik. Devalk. Baker breaking away. And will fall to the ice. Grady coming out for the Hawkeyes. Flood behind the net. And he will turn around. Toss it over to Baker. Baker to Flood. And another shot there by the Hawkeyes. A relentless, truly, this period as we just see the puck staying in the defensive zone for the Braves. And we will see a penalty here at the end of that play on Grady of the Hawkeyes. He is not happy about it as he trails off into the box. 28 seconds here, we, which means we will uh, only get to see 30 seconds of the power play affect the end of this period, and then a minute 30 to start the next. That will be a big impact. However, I'm not sure if the mindset is there right now for the Braves. The Iowa Hawkeyes have kept the puck in Schneider, Schneider zone and the sole, the sole reason that they keep stealing it and intercepting it every time we try and make something happen. Shaq will send it in. Davis now on the ice, this line here. Looking to cut the penalty kill and do a good job here. You watch Shaq try and pick it up and he fails to send it over to Rock. Nice job there by Zillig as the fans are loud. And Tommy Shaq did get a penalty called against him when trying to uh, lose that puck. I'm not sure exactly what the call was, but from my guess, he was a little too aggressive with his stick, trying to reclaim it after he'd slipped off, that he ended up watching him, watching it wobble past him and ended up skating the box. So now we'll have a four on four for a minute 38, only six seconds left in regulation as the time ticks down. Flood into the corner alongside Mullen, and time is called. I'm quite impressed by Devin Schneider, did not play at all this series until now, and has done an amazing job not cracking under the pressure put on him by the impressive offense of the Hawkeyes. No, Megan, I completely agree. Schneider came in and he was able to end this period with the same score it started with. However, he ended the, the period with the same score it started with. The offense wasn't able to reciprocate the good fortune that De Devin Schneider was able to perform. Coward is an incredible goalie and he's putting in the work to keep this game 2-5. Hawkeyes are definitely showing out here and we will go over to our analyst and sideline reporter Logan Quinn. All right. Logan, what you got for us? The second period started off much like the first with Iowa scoring early. And then it wasn't until around the 10 minute mark when who else but Tommy Davis once again stuffed in a rebound to give Bradley a 2-2 tie. But in, on that ensuing goal, he received a penalty for his celebration. Iowa scored on that ensuing power play and then rattled off two more to give themselves a three goal lead. This caused Cole Walter to surrender the net to his goaltending partner, Devin Schneider. If Bradley wants to get back in this game, look for them to come out quick and firing off on all cylinders in the third period. Back to you, Megan. All right, thank you so much, Logan. That was definitely an intense period. We had back and forth. We, there was a couple of minutes where we just played consecutively, and then at the very end, it seemed like stoppage after stoppage. But it'll be interesting to see one last period for Bradley to try and come back. This Braves team is known for coming back, but we'll see if they can cut this deficit down and come back with energy and momentum. 
No, yeah, I mean, look, our home opener against ISU, we entered the third, trailing one to four. We won that game, f uh, what, five or six to four? So, down by three again, entering the third. Can history repeat itself? We're about to see in 13 minutes. All right, we will catch you back here after the break. You are watching the Bradley Hockey Network. I'm Megan Ruger-Smith alongside Caden Sexton.
Welcome back to the Owen Center for period three of game two between the Bradley Braves and the Iowa Hawkeyes. Quite a demanding period from the Hawkeyes. They showed a lot of dominance with their offensive ability and Bradley struggling to maintain any level of control in this game. There was a lot of uncoordinated chaos for the Braves. Any thoughts before we head into this period, Caden? Yeah, you know, we're already trailing by three. We need to come, and there's gonna be a penalty instituted for both sides while we start this period. 133 left on the Bradley, or uh, left in for Iowa on the box. 155 until Bradley will have their full strength left. So operating a four on four to start this game, or start this period, isn't gonna be easy. 20 more minutes left in the game. You have to play all 20 minutes like they're the last. In the start of the last period, the first five minutes of the game, Bradley did not have control of the puck. They were not able to command it, keep it on their sticks, and keep uh, and, and create anything due to the lack of control. If Bradley can come away and, or come and start hot with this four and four and put a goal in, this is a new hockey game. It's definitely not impossible for the Braves to come back and win this one, but they need to be on top of their game. Hopefully that's something that they can achieve here. And they are bringing out their powerful lineup of junior Tommy Davis, definitely the star player here for the Braves. Andrew Spence, Jacob Gousset. And we are underway here as that gets tossed over to Rafone. Rafone over to Pape. Pape coming down the ice and he will send it down. The ref intercepts it. Rafone off the wall. And Gousset will pick that one up. Carlson coming in behind him. Nice job there by Gousset to send it over to Davis. Unfortunately for the Braves, picked up again by Carlson. And Schneider returns for period number three. And that was a empty net situation there. A little too close to a goal for the Braves liking. They really need to pull themselves together here and try and stop any mistakes from happening if they can help it. And the puck gets sent down there by Sam Bryant. Tommy Davis coming around, fighting off Rafone. Carlson joining Rafone. And Carlson over to Golding. And Golding will send it behind the net. Over to Pape. Viola now. Uh, Schmidt will pick it up. Schmidt over to Blessing. Blessing to Baker. Baker gets a little bounce on the puck. Chipped up in the air by Mullen. And Mullen trips himself and Blessing. Schmidt once again coming around. Back and forth here in the start of this period. And that gets knocked away there by Norris. Brady. That gets sent down there by Grady. Malbon hesitating there before chipping it long down into the defensive zone of the Hawkeyes. And we see both teams now at full strength. As Shaq exchanges his place for Pierce. Shot attempt there by Norris and that gets out of play. Yeah, I mean, go look at Iowa's Brian Rafone. He is playing incredible on defense and on offense. Tonight he has two assists, and every time there's somebody swatting that puck out of Bradley's uh, own stick or intercepting a pass, look who it is. It's number eight. We need to get Rafone out of, and that's a stoppage of play as that one went straight up into the net. But if Brian Rafone can get held and get stopped and get pushed out of play by Bradley, we have a good chance of getting back in this one. Mueller shooting that right off the bat. Once again, it shows that this Hawkeyes team does not get complacent. They are shooting at every possible opportunity, trying to wear down Bradley's defense. Nice pass there by Pierce over to Flood. And that bounces back behind the net. Into the wall goes Rock. And that gets picked up there by Cornell. Grady 
Waiting for the pass, Pierce gets it sent over. Nice block there by Flood. Battling it out in the corner are Rock. Alongside Dudzik. Nice pass there by Blessing, trying to get it out of their zone. Gusail nudge the puck with his skate there. Pierce unable to pick up the pass. Grady and Blessing colliding there. Loved by Pierce as Pierce will exchange himself for Andrew Spence. And that pass from Pape is deflected and it'll once again get sent back down into Bradley's defensive zone. Lost stick here for Bruchensky. Bruchensky, my apologies. Spence over to Blessing, that'll get passed. And Rafone comes around over to Viola. Viola and Spence battling it out as Shaq will pick it up, knocks it off the skate of Spence. Rafone in the defensive zone. Picking up speed here as he will get past Davis. Rafone now leading the charge. That gets by, nice stop there. And we see Davis coming out aggressive and another lost stick here. And there is a battle over there between Brunchuski and Tommy Davis. Shack will pick it up, try and send it down, but it ends up getting passed. Tommy Davis on the ground. Shot down by Rafone behind the net of the Braves. Schmidt in the corner, battling it out right now with the Hawkeyes. Shaq has now joined them. Parisi alongside Viola. And time is called and we should be seeing a penalty here for cross-checking, if I'm not mistaken, by Tommy Shaq. Yeah, Tommy Shaq just uh, received a cross-checking penalty. Cross-checking and roughing, two most common penalties from last night. That's the first cross-check I've noticed tonight. However, Tommy Shaq leaves, leads the Braves in time in the box. 16 minutes so far this season. That'll go up to uh, 18 for his ninth penalty. And the puck gets sent down to Howard. Rafone coming behind the net. Rafone over to Carlson. Carlson trying to Bradley make a charge. To number five, Tommy Shack. Two Rafone. Around the corner, coming in over to Norris. Norris breaking away and he will shoot it at Schneider. Nice defense there by Schneider. Minute and a half on the power play for the Hawkeyes. Braves once again trying to do a good job of the penalty kill and that is a goal for Iowa. It just became a 6-2 game with 14.47 left. If you're the Braves now, you definitely want to avoid a drop in morale. You have to play the full 60, and if you don't, you're just going to let the Hawkeyes pile on. Malbon coming in alongside Orzeski. In the corner is Zillig. Zillig and Neary battling it out, and that will get by Rafone. Rafone in the corner with Corrales, picked up there by Orzeski. Neary, Neary over to Zillig. Zillig shoots, and that is two beautiful stops there by Devin Schneider, doing everything in his power to keep the Braves behind by only four. And in the corner, Norris. Norris over there with Davis. On the ground is Zillig. Norris trying to chip it away. Braves attempting to make any attempt 
here at offense. And unfortunately, no players there for the Braves to make any connected pass. Touching up are Davis and Rack Pierce over, and that hits off the glass. Turning around is Bryant. Big Baker loses sight of the puck with Brick House as the two get into a little extracurricular down there. And that gets pushed away by Mueller. Davis attempting to get it over to Baker, but that gets picked up by Grady. Grady and Davis now behind the net. And we see a little bit of a pause in the action there as Mueller lines up a good shot, unable to make it. Coming around, Dudzik. Dudzik over to Davis. Davis shoved into the wall by Brickhouse. Brickhouse looking at the Iowa audience, reveling in the cheers. Davis in the corner. Spence sends it across the ice over to Malbon. Malbon shoots it, and that hits DeVolk. And we see a little break in the action here as there's an interesting pose there in the corner by Shaq. Yeah, it looks like Brickhouse originally tried to show some aggression towards Shaq, but in the end it looked like he was kind of holding Shaq in the air. It was a very interesting position uh, to, just to see. And some last minute line changes for the Hawkeyes before this face off. Malbon coming in hot, chasing after Viola. And Viola, nice defense there by Schneider, laying out. And coming around is Parisi. Parisi in the corner with Schmidt, and it gets out of play. Yeah, Megan, you mentioned earlier these are some pretty low rafters in the Owens Center. That one actually hit a flag from the Mustangs, and I don't think Bradley was too happy about that. Malbon will send it down, chasing after it is Mullen. Mullen will send it over to Viola, gets past Viola, trip there by Malbon. Schmidt over to Shaq, intercepted by Mullen. And it just keeps going back and forth across this line. Yeah. This is a very physical game, but a game being played by uh, right up against the boards for both teams. Both teams are keeping the puck next to the boards and including the referees. I don't know if it was the game plan to uh, make the referees obstacles for each of them to go around, but they're playing so tight to the boards that it seems like every time the puck comes by, the refs are jumping away from it. Davis coming in hot, and that gets in. Tommy Davis showing up tonight for the Braves. And that is a... opportunity he saw an open net he got himself close did a stick handle and just put one in to reduce the lead and they're cut the lead into uh, by three all we need to do now is double our score and we're in overtime <laughs> Bryant in the wall with the Hawkeyes coming back after that goal not slowing down one bit blessing nice interference there by Rafone flood shot at the net Looks like Bradley is trying to put some quick offense here in the end of the game. Big push there by Corrales, and that gets gloved by Howard. You know, I feel like this shift was a break for this uh, veteran line, and as I say it, the veteran line is skating back onto the ice. Uh, it looks like Bradley's tactic is to just get guys to stay out there. Tommy Davis scored his third goal, got a 20 second break, and now he's taking the next face off. Of. Bradley's strategy is literally just Tommy Davis at this point. Nice return from Davis. It's great to see him back on the ice for the Braves. Schmidt, nice stick handling there over to Baker. Baker checking to see if Davis has got him. 
And Davis shoots it. Nice defense off the leg of Howard. And unfortunately, Shaq is unable to get control of the puck. To Shaq from Rock, and time is called. Yeah, that one hit out of play yet again. The, uh, the inevitable task here in the Owen Center is how long until one gets hit out of play. But it's interesting for me to see that this tactic is just get the veterans out there, get them a quick shift, and next whistle, get the next line of veterans out there. We're seeing the same five or 12 names out on this ice trying to win this game. And coming in, nice job here by Neary. Schmidt, Neary into the wall. Big hit there by Spence, and time is called. So it looks like we, uh, we're gonna have a minute to get a breather. Looks like we have... Neary comes up fine. Just a big fall there, hopefully no impending in injury. Neary will take the uh, bench over, probably will get checked out. Hopefully all is good with him on that hit. Neary and Orzeski alternating out. Muller and Mullen on the ice here, Grady to his knees. A lot of physicality here as we have a little over 10 minutes remaining in the period. Malbon coming in hot. Corrales attempting to get in there. Mueller with control. Bryant, great defense there. Brian and Mueller will come tumbling to the ice. Daniels with sole control of the puck. He will chip it down and icing is called. Yeah, and it looks like we, will, we might have an Iowa power play. Mueller is now skating to the box. Uh, Dan Schneider was having a little bit of confusion with the Bradley bench. He was getting called in so they could have the extra attacker as we now have time out for both sides to discuss a game plan going into this five on four power play with 9.47 left in the game. This is the perfect opportunity for Bradley to make it within two of the lead. So we will see a Bradley power play. Those are quite abundant here, but Bradley has been unable to really capitalize them this series and Bradley right now has a little under 10 minutes to uh, cut the lead here. They are down by three. Some fighting in the corner here with Norris. University of Iowa penalty assessed to number 89. Davis Davis out on the ice again. Bryant back to Davis. Davis unable to get his stick on it. Shaq turning it around. Zach and Mullen out there in the corner. Bradley fighting back as Mullen comes out victorious and Lapori attempts to stick it, but oh, icing is called and Lapori is not happy about that call there by the refs. Yeah, that's a, that's a unique icing. The, uh, the Braves need to collect themselves in the next minute 24. And it looks like we have a second man now skating to the box. So we're going to have a perfect opportunity for Bradley with a five on three after this timeout. Everybody's going to come. They're going to get a game plan together. And Bradley's going to score two goals with this five on three. <laughs> I would be nice to see Bradley attempt to find their offense here. So the box is getting a little full here. And it's really a feat to have as many minutes spent in the penalty box and have as commanding of an offense as the Hawkeyes do. I'm, I'm truly quite impressed. Mullen in the penalty box. Yeah, Megan, you brought up a good point. This team just is finding their guys chilling out behind a pane of glass instead of on the bench with them or on the ice with them. And they're having to look around and uh, see that there's not enough players to, to make it even. And Iowa's head coach is now arguing with the referee uh, down on the ice. The referees are now coming to talk it over as it looks like both sides are getting ready to uh, come back and get this five on three ready. All right, we will see Schneider return to the net. Howard staying in the game. Howard definitely somewhat of a fortress here for the Hawkeyes. And play is underway. Coming in is Spence. 
Sam Bryant. Over to Davis. This familiar line by the Braves. Shaq over to Bryant. Nice interception there by Rafone and Carlson. Davis coming in around. Davis definitely one of the faster skaters for the Braves as he attempts to capitalize on this power play and he will drag over to Shaq. Shaq unable to get a good toss. Spence over to Davis. Davis, another fake out hit. Big slap there by Shaq. Tommy Davis is side of his head. He's given this game everything he has, but Howard is just a brick wall in that, Megan. 45 seconds left for the five on three. They, uh, the Braves want to capitalize before it goes to a five on four here. You really want to see Bradley get a goal here on the five on three to try and tie this game at the minimum. Davis over to Spence, Spence back to Davis. This is exactly what it looked like last time. And we are seeing a lot of familiar plays here. Nice interception by Carlson, not called icing. Schneider will send it over and that'll get picked up by Pierce. Pierce not happy with Andrew Pape coming in and that'll get gloved by Schneider. 11 seconds remain on the five on three. Look, the five on three, if face off, I was led on face offs today. However, if Bradley can take this face off, they have one more play before, Brad, uh, before Iowa comes out with a fourth man. And in 47 seconds, they'll come out to full strength. And Bradley coming in. The charge being led by Cam Etchison. Etchison looking out for someone and he will shoot it. Nice glove there by Howard. So we got one second left on the five on three. Third, oh, and the Iowa coach is having a b very big argument with the uh, linesman. One second left, that allows us to have a quick shot in before we get a uh, return. And we are at five on four now. Rock over to Flood, Flood to Edgerson. Edgerson taking his time with it. And he will send it back to Flood. Flood was not prepared for that and it'll get sent down. No icing called. Rock coming around. Baker stopping. And Flood trying to come up with something the last three seconds of the power play. And the Hawkeyes survive a penalty kill once again. And the Braves offense is struggling to finish up this game. Yeah, as we uh, mentioned, one of the keys to the game, a penalty kill for Iowa. We said if they were able to uh, stop Bradley from scoring when they were on the, sh the short man advantage like they did last night, it would be significant. Last night, the uh, Iowa's penalty kill stopped a five on three. Tonight, they've stopped three five on threes with Bradley not scoring on any penalty tonight. And the Hawkeyes coming out, Orzenski over to Golding. Picked up by Spence. Spence over to Shaq. We see this veteran line has once again returned. Davis following Orzeski. And it gets sent down by Rafone Golding. Over to Orzeski. Orzeski unable to stick it. Spence now alongside Bryant. Bryant over to Shaq. Davis hauling it alongside Shaq. Shaq looking to get one in. And nice block there by Howard. Yeah, Tommy Davis is really trying to uh, do everything he can, but Shaq is a wall. Shaq had a little scuffle there with Iowa at the end of the play as he skates over to the bench now. You know, we got 6.25 left, trailing by three. I think this is the right time for a goal. You're having the face off right in front of the net. As uh, we see the pucks now behind the net for Flood. Flood's trying to dig it out, but Viola is stealing it back from him. Etchison with a big shove there. Devolk now on the ice. He's not had a lot of playing time so far. Tonight, Viola coming away. Brunchewski back on the ice. Big hit there by Malbon. Goose turning it around. Gertler definitely getting the most out of this lineup as he can. Etchison now with Blessing. 
And nice block there by Schneider. Under six minutes remain now. Viola coming around. Brunchewski alongside of him. And Malbon will send that one out of play. Yeah, Megan, you know, shots have been an issue tonight. Uh, the imbalance happened again that Iowa was allowed to create yesterday. It's been more manageable, and it's not been as big of a gap between the two teams. But Iowa still has controlled. And I think part of it is just because time of attack, the time that Iowa has spent inside of Cole and now Devon's zones has not benefited this offense, this Bradley offense. Schmidt on the floor there with Parisi. Over to Cornell. Cornell shoots it down behind the net. And time is called. I think that one was an icing. You can see our uh, our head coach was uh, calling for it too. I think he just wants to get the puck away from Devin Schneider. Devin Schneider's seen the puck up close and personal a couple extra minutes than this team has wanted to have him see it tonight. Bradley looking to fall and not fall without a fight as they shoot that into Howard. It would be a rough sweep here by the Hawkeyes if the Braves can't score at least one more goal with five minutes remaining. Yeah, Shaq and Mullen with a little tussle before the whistle, or at the after the whistle there. However, it looks like an Iowa line change will occur. So we'll see new fresh faces for the Hawkeyes. Coming around, Mueller on the ice, tripping is Cornell. And Mueller will chip it away into Bradley's defensive zone. Schmidt over to Shaq. Gertler milking the most out of this lineup as he can. Tommy Davis with a hat trick. Trying to rely on him as much as he can. Spence shoves Mullen into the wall. And Tommy Davis on the ice. Chipped up into the air by Mueller. And Schmidt, Malbon attempting to get that away from Dudzik, big leap there, a lot happening right now as Shaq slowly makes his way and he will chip it right over to Brickhouse as he prepares for the line change. Nice block there by Schneider as his team is switching out. Nice hit there by Pape. Behind the net is Sam Bryant. Sam Bryant coming around, attempting to remain in control of the puck. He will send it behind the net, gets picked up by Pape. Brickhouse right there and bounces it away, trying to get it over to Mullen. And coming out is Luca Golding. Golding with sole control, trying to get it over to Carlson, unable to get control of that. Lupori now into the wall by Baker. You say, and Baker flood now with control. As the Braves try and rekindle something here, that gets pulled away by Lapori. In the corner, Sam Bryant. Flood now. Trying to end out strong here, but the Hawkeyes are persistent. Once again, Bryant behind the net, sending it down over to Grady Blessing. And once again, the Hawkeyes will send it down back to Bradley's zone. Devin Schneider on guard this whole time as the Hawkeyes continue to put pressure on him, but he has done a great job so far this game. Zach Daniels coming in around as we see once again this veteran line come on out. Cam Etchison, Zach Pierce, nice job getting it by Mullen, and that's a good shot there by Daniels. Bradley trying to get some offense. Nice reflexes there by Howard. Yeah, you know, in that last shift, we saw a lot more open ice hits than we've seen all game long. Bradley is trying to energize the boys to get something in by lighting the spark and hitting somebody in the ice. 
However, then we saw it reciprocated, and Iowa came back and started giving the same amount of checks as we see Pierce entering the box for Bradley. With 2.40 left in the game, a two-minute penalty is not what we're looking to see. We'll now have to deal with a five-on-four for the next two minutes of our remaining 2.40 in the game. At this point, Bradley wants to say they fought till the very end because that's all they can do. And once again, this veteran lineup is out here quite impressed by the call by Gertler to continue to put Davis on the ice alongside Spence, Rock, and Schmidt. And Schmidt in the back. Brew Brunchuski coming around. Rock protecting Schneider. Parisi. Nice job there by Bradley. Defense to stop. Another good stop there by Schneider. We have two minutes left. Big trip there by Brunchuski. Davis over to Schmidt. Schmidt unable to handle that cleanly, and that gets out of play. And a very late hit from Parisi on Iowa. He's getting yelled at by his coach, but the coach is just going to go in and yell at the referee now, too. Parishi is going to now go into the box, so we will have four on four for and less of a goal scored the remainder of the game as there's 157 left and two minutes to go on this penalty. 118 left until Bradley will get a man advantage. Maybe we can make something out of this, Megan. We can try. I would definitely like to see the Braves try and turn up some offense here. Okay. You, go, you, yep. go, you go down swinging. I mean, look, a minute 57, three goals. That might not happen. But at the same time, netting one more, making the gap a little smaller, that's something that will motivate you when you go on the road next week. Huh? All you want to do is just say you fought till the end, you played the full 60 minutes, and sometimes that's really all you can do, especially against a team that has proven to be superior in this series as the Hawkeyes. Ethan Baker fighting a little there with Norris, and behind the net is Blessing. Blessing trying to dig it out from Brickhouse. Baker coming back around. Nice job by Baker getting control of it, and he will shoot, and that'll get behind the net. Brickhouse bumping into Baker, and that'll get sent down by Carlson. Chasing it is Shaq, and Shaq coming behind the net. And he will send it over to Baker, and it gets past Howard behind the net now. And he will chip it up. Shaq over to Bryant. No Davis on the ice. And Davis just now switches out for Baker. I see the Braves love to catch me off guard. We have one minute remaining here as Shaq controls the puck. Davis looking to get one final call through Davis. Sends it right to Raffone, and Raffone sends it right back down the ice. Over to Malbon. Malbon and Viola in the corner, over to Pierce. Davis, Davis, over to Spence, looking for one last shot. Pierce in front of the net. Gets away from Pierce or Zeski. Will send it down, 20 seconds left. Bradley on the power play here as Malbon comes skating around. And a nice shot there, gloved by Howard. 13 seconds left in this one. Bradley's gonna fight till the end. Like you've said, Megan, the full 60. You, you gotta play until your last breath. And I respect the call from Egler. He is keeping the veterans on the ice. He has done this the last the majority of this period, at least the end of this game, as we will watch the clock tick down here with a five on four. For Davis, over to Malbon, over to Schmidt, and the Braves will do all they can as the veteran line ends out the game. Golding will chip it down the ice, and that is the end. A sweep for the University of Iowa Hawkeyes, taking this game six to three, most certainly triumphantly. Yeah, Megan, I mean, a lot of things went right for the Hawkeyes in this game. Uh, a lot of things went wrong for Bradley. You'll have to just fix it next time. However, the, 
the teams will come together at center ice for a handshake. Always love to see the sportsmanship. All right, we will send it over to our sideline analyst for one last time this evening. Logan Quinn. And here he is. Logan, what do you got for us? It was a tough weekend for the Bradley Braves as they fell to Iowa on both Friday and Saturday night. They'll need to wipe these two games from their memory because they have a quick turnaround when they head to Champaign to play Illinois on Thursday night. Look for them to come out fast and kind of take what they, uh, and learn from what they did wrong here and take what they did good. And hopefully they can change the outcome of what happened this weekend when they head to Illinois. Back to you, Megan. All right, Logan, thank you so much for that. I feel like Logan was reading my mind as I was going to talk about the game against Illinois on Thursday. You can catch it here on the Bradley Hockey Network as our crew will be traveling. It was a tough fight by the Braves falling to the Superior University of Iowa. Any last thoughts before we sign off, Caden? Yeah, you know, Tommy Davis had an incredible game. One man can only do two, so much. He got a hat trick, put, put, put all three goals on the board for Bradley. However, three isn't six. We lost six to three. Go and give credit where credit's due. Ryan Carlson of the Iowa Hawkeyes had his own hat trick on the other end of the, on, of the rink, uh, putting up a third or half of the goals for the Hawkeyes. And you have to consider just the incredible play by him, the incredible play by Brian Raffone, Patrick and assists, incredible play on defense. All around Iowa, from goaltending with Howard, from defense to their incredible offense with 11 goals combined the last two nights, it was just too hard to beat for this team. Despite the aggressive acts on the ice, it is very nice to see here former players taking a picture together and chatting after the game. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Bradley Hockey Network for tonight's matchup between the Bradley Braves and the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. I'm Megan Ruger-Smith alongside Caden Sexton. And before we sign off, I'd like to give a shout out to our whole crew working tonight, our analyst and sideline reporter, Logan Quinn, our public address announcer, Kinsley Relaford, on graphics, Kay Lou Casey, and on camera, Scott Sharon Abrav, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch you the next time you tune in to the Bradley Hockey Network.